Yes, Roma wines taste better because only Roma selects from the world's greatest wine reserves for your pleasure. And now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, Roma Wines present... Suspense! Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Mr. Glenn Ford in The End of the Road, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, those better-tasting California wines enjoyed by more Americans than any other wine. For friendly entertaining... For delightful dining. Yes, right now, a glassful would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you Glenn Ford in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! For an automobile salesman, I have expensive habits. I mean dames. It had been dames, dames, dames as long as I could remember. Now, that is strictly murder. Also gets you definitely no place. So this day... Well, I was turning over a new leaf. Nothing on my mind but business. Pencil in hand, a sheet of figures on the desk, figuring how to sell a million Excelsior 8s and make a billion dollars. Someone tapped on the glass. I didn't even look up. Just the busy executive. Ah, There it was again. I looked up. Am I disturbing you? Was she disturbing me? I got up in a trance and followed her across the showroom floor. It seemed as though I'd never seen anyone walk that way before in all my life. This is my husband, Mr. Ganlon. Mr. Evans, the sales manager. How do you do, sir? All right, so she had a husband. He was a little sourpuss runt with a limpy leg, about twice her age, dressed like dough. The kind of dough that could buy Excelsior 8s by the dozen. But I wasn't thinking about that now. I was... I was thinking about her. I was thinking the best way to guarantee seeing her again was to send them out that door in an Excelsior 8, so I pasted on the big salesman's smile, went to town. Now, this is our customs line, Mr. Ganlon, distinctive in appearance. Uh, I take you'll notice that three-tone color effect inside. Now, it's upholstery there to match, and the broad, graceful, sweeping lines. That's a thing of beauty. What's under the hood? Well, that's the question I've been waiting for. Why, the world-famous Excelsior motor, Mr. Gannon. Gann, please, I've never driven in an Excelsior. Perhaps Mr. Evans would take us for a ride. Oh, now look here, Sylvia. Gann, please. Uh, all right. It won't take a minute. Yeah. You try that, that rear seat, Mr. Gannon. You'll find it broad and luxurious. Huh. Now, Mrs. Gannon, if you'd care to sit up here in front. Thank you. You can see what it'll do. Yeah. Huh. You see how it handles, Mr. Gannon, like a baby carriage, well, huh? keep your eyes on the road. I turned the corner on two wheels, explained about the minimum sway being on account of the stabilizers. In the mirror, I saw he kind of closed his eyes, so I turned to her. I still didn't know if this deal was going to be too easy, but one look at the look in those eyes, and I began to have a rough idea. What do they call you? Which they? Your friends. Speed? How about you? Sylvia? Why the speed, Evans? I like to get places. I like to go places. That's the same thing. Maybe you're right. Maybe we're both right. Maybe, speed, maybe. If she'd asked for it, I'd have made that Excelsior turn somersaults. As it was, I showed her some driving tricks that'd make your hair stand on end. She loved them. Every once in a while, her eyes met mine and clung there just long enough. We knew, both of us, what I was selling, and it wasn't an Excelsior. Well, I can have the car ready for delivery first thing in the morning, Mr. Ganlon. What do you say? Gan, please. Uh, oh... All right, Sylvia, Uh, all right. Now, if you'll just sign the order. I want it now, and I pay cash. Well, that's fine. Fine, Mr. Gannon. That's fine. I think you'll find the desk in my office uh, the most convenient. Oh, that's your office there? Yes, that's right, Mr. Gannon. I'll collect all the necessary papers while you're making out the check. All right, all right. Well, how did you like it? 
Like what? Hmm? Well, the, the car, for a start. I love it. You'd better drive in for a service check as soon as you can. When? Mm. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. You suppose you could manage to be alone? Yes. I'll be alone. She came in the next morning, and she was alone. Well, from that day, we went places. We went there fast. But this was different. She was different. Different from anything I'd ever known before. And in less than two weeks, I knew I didn't care about husbands or Excelsior 8s or, or even a million dollars. All I cared about was her. And it was the same with her. That is, most of the time. That was what was tearing me up the worst, the way she was the other times, kind of standoffish, scared. That was screwy. I didn't get it. One day, we were down at the beach, and as usual lately, we were arguing about it. Oh, please, Speed, don't. Well, what's the matter with Reno? We've got to do something about it someday, haven't we? Yes, yes. Well, that's what they got Reno for. He'll come after me. I'll let him come. We'll tear up his claim check. Speed, I want to run along the beach. Come on. All right. <laughs> at 33, I'm a little too old for this stuff. Anyway, I want to Speed, know... Speed, you've got to learn to relax. I lost my roller skates. I'll get you another pair. I don't need skates. Yes, you do. Oh. All right, Sylvia. Oh. Sylvia, cut out the horse play, will you, and quit stalling. I want a decision one way or another now. Oh, darling, now you're angry. Sure I am. I am. It's a screwy deal. You love me, you want to leave him, but you won't. Oh, but I will, darling. I... Speed, you see, there's so many things that are complicated and mixed up. Well, first... There's my father. Well, what about him? Well, you see, my father and Ganlon were mining partners in a little town called Phoebe, Arizona. And then and then there was a cave-in, and my father was killed. Well, he was such a wonderful man. We, we were so terribly close. Oh, that's tough, baby. Huh? Sometimes it's almost as though he were alive. I, I see him in dream speed ever so often. I hear him speak. It was ten years ago. Well, what's all that got to do with you and Ganlon? Well, stop it! Stop torturing me! Can't you just leave me alone? Leave me alone! Okay, okay. Okay, if that's what you want. Oh, no, Speed, no, don't leave me. Now, look, baby, I don't know about you, but I'm leaving town tonight. I can't take this any longer. I'm going back now, quit my job, draw my three bucks out of the bank and pack a bag. I'm leaving tonight with you or without you. Oh, no, Speed, you can't. You can't go without me. Well, that's me. up to you, baby. But I'm afraid. Of what? I don't know. Well, we'll worry about that, that later. What about it? All right. All right, I'll go. I was to meet her at the usual place at 8 o'clock, and I was on time. But even before I got there, I realized she'd never show up. And I waited an hour, then I crossed the street to the apartment where they lived. The seventh floor it was 707. Uh, she must have been hanging around the door because she opened it almost at once, came out into the hall, closed it behind her. She was scared to death. Speed, you've got to go right away. Not without you, baby. No, listen... Listen to me, Speed. I, I lied to you this afternoon. No kidding. I mean, about my father. He he wasn't just killed in a cave-in. He was murdered. Ganlon murdered him. Oh, so you married Ganlon to kind of show your appreciation. Yes, I, I mean... Look, you don't make sense, baby. Come on, we're going inside. No, Speed, no! We're going to settle this once and for all now. In the living room, Ganlon was lying on the couch with his shoes off, his feet kind of propped up... And... In a chair opposite was a young punk in a tan overcoat who looked as though he took the wrong kind of nose drops when he needed courage. He let it fairly be known that he was... Well, he had a gun in his pocket. Gallon didn't even look up. Well, Mr. Evans, this is an unexpected pleasure. Well, I'm afraid it's no pleasure. Either way, I've come to tell you that your wife is leaving you with me. Oh, is she? Yeah. What about it, Sylvia? I don't... You don't seem to have entirely convinced her, Mr. Evans. Listen, I don't know exactly what, what goes on here. Obviously. I, but I do know that she's headed straight for a crack up and that you're at the bottom of it. So she's leaving tonight. Go on, Sylvia, get your things. All right. Mr. Evans, I'm not sure you fully appreciate the penalties of stealing a man's wife. Well, there's divorce courts to handle that. Besides other ways, if you're big enough. Well, since you brought up the question of superior force... All right, Zeke, take it. Okay. Put him up. Hi, funny face. Oh, gunsels with guns you have, huh? Sometimes they come in handy, Mr. Evans. Come on. Right. Start walking. Hey, any particular direction? Yeah. Outside. All right. 
You win, Mr. Ganlon. Take him out and kick him down the stairs, Zeke. Kick him! The punk was plenty shaky. He had the gun jammed right into my back. <laughs> That's not smart if your guy knows a little judo. I made a quick half turn. He fired, but not soon enough. Ah! I'd have broken his arm before he could try again. The gun scooted across the floor somewhere, and I was just thinking it was lucky they, they soundproof these fancy apartments. And the thing started going off again. I whirled around to see Sylvia with a gun in her hand, stalking Ganlon like a tigress. He was cowering behind the furniture, and she was moving around trying to get a clear shot at him. It took me one good leap to get over there and knock her cold. It was a bowl of water, some flowers on the table. I threw the flowers on the floor, threw the water on Sylvia. She opened her eyes, looked around. Oh, oh Speed, why did you do it? You're lucky, baby. When you get better at it, they're liable to call it murder. For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you Glenn Ford in End of the Road. Roma Wines presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Ken Niles for Roma Wines. Whenever you want dinner to be outstanding, whenever the occasion calls for the magic touch that changes a meal into gracious, satisfying dining, enrich your table with a delicious Roma California wine. With tender, juicy steak or oven brown roast, enjoy the tantalizing taste harmonies of red, robust Roma Burgundy. Or bring out the exquisite hidden flavors in fish or fowl with pale gold delicate Roma Sautern. And remember, all Roma wines taste better because Roma begins with choicest grapes. Then with unmatched skill and resources, Roma guides these naturally finer grapes unhurriedly to tempting taste perfection. Later, Roma places this luscious grape treasure with Roma wines of years before. And finally, Roma selects from the world's greatest wine reserves for your pleasure. With your dinner tomorrow, enjoy better tasting Roma wines. That's R O M A, Roma, the greatest name in wine. And now, Roma wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Glenn Ford as Speed Evans, with Kathy Lewis as Sylvia Ganlon in End of the Road. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. After the gunplay, I thought it would be easy. When I tried to get her down into the car, she clawed me like a wildcat. I, I had to clip her again. It was a battle all the way across town. Until we got to barreling along Highway 99, she knew she'd break her neck if she tried to jump. And all of a sudden, she, she went to sleep. I looked at her over there, sleeping in the corner, rolled up like a kitten and as innocent as a baby, and I knew I was, I was for it if it killed me. I'd just have to do the, well, I'd have to do the best I could. We'd passed Bakersfield. I was headed up over the Tehachapi Mountains before she woke up. It was morning. Oh. Oh. Hello, darling. Feeling better, baby? Uh-huh. Oh, I had such a wonderful dream. I was... I was a little girl again, and I was with my father, and and he was rowing across a, a lake, and, and then... Then what? Speed, I... I lied to you about Ganlon. He didn't kill my father. I was wicked to say that, wasn't I? Ah, you're just a little mixed up, that's all. Uh, Speed? Mm, yeah? Where are we going? We're going to your hometown, baby, Phoebe, Arizona. Oh. You like the idea? Well, I suppose so. Why? Now, look, baby, I'm no psychiatrist, but something happened back there when you were a kid, something to do with the death of your father. It's had you on a merry-go-round ever since, so much so that about nine, nine hours ago, you tried to kill a man. I said I was sorry about that, Speed. Sure. If you and I are going to make a go of this, I think we ought to do something a little more practical about it than just feel sorry, don't you? You make it sound as though you thought I was going to go around killing people for the rest of my life. All I say is that you're not going to be very happy until we know the facts about this thing, whatever they are, until you've faced the facts. From then on, well, we can forget it. Speed? Yeah? I'm terribly hungry, aren't you? 
Yeah, I guess I could do with a little something. Look, there's a place up ahead. Hmm? Oh, okay. Bus just pulled in. Yes, yeah, one of the regular stops. Speed. Kiss me. How's that? Oh, that's wonderful. All right, let's go, huh? My, what a lot of people. Oh, those big buses hold a lot of people, baby. Help! Help! I'm being kidnapped! Come here. Help me! It's all right. It's all right. She's my no. wife. Hey, hey, what's going on here? I'm not. And I've never seen her before in my life. I'm being what? kidnapped. Hey, say, that's no way to treat even your wife, Mr. Oh. You ought to be shaking. All right, all right. If you must know, she's, she's crazy. What? She's my wife, but she's hopelessly insane. I don't... <laughs> About five minutes later, she snapped out of it. You'd think nothing at all had happened, but I wasn't taking any more chances. I took to the side roads whenever I could, figuring the cops might be on my tail any minute, so we didn't cross the state line until way after midnight. It was next morning when I kicked it out of gear in Phoebe, Arizona. There was only one hotel. We registered, adjoining rooms. All the time, I was watching her like a hawk, but I needn't have. No, now that we were there, she seemed to be glad. We'd been in our room in about five minutes when the phone rang. Hello? Mr. Evans? Yeah? Just a moment, Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans, this is San Francisco, operator 23. We've got a long-distance call for you. San Francisco? Yes, sir. We've been trying to reach you all night. Shall I put your party on now? Yeah, all right, yeah, go ahead. Hello? Evans? Yeah? This is Ganlon. <laughs> you must have a good private eye on your payroll, too, huh? I know you're an intelligent man, Evans, whatever else you may be. I knew where you'd go. But I want to tell you something. You're getting in deep water, deeper than you know anything about. And you hope I'll drown. All right. Maybe I will. But I'm still wading in. I'm coming down there, Evans. In the meantime, keep quiet and keep her quiet. And keep your nose out of things. What's that supposed to be, a threat? I'm not threatening you, I'm telling you. For your own good. It was Ganlon, wasn't it? Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he called to give us his blessing. He's coming down too, isn't he? Maybe. Speed, I'm glad. You can't know how glad I am. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be real cozy, just the three of us. You've been cruel to me, Speed. Who, me? I've forgiven you, though you know that. <laughs> sure, baby. I didn't understand at first, but I understand now why you brought me here, I mean. You're going to find proof that Gan killed my father. I'll work on that. I can tell you exactly how it happened. You said yesterday you were lying. Oh, don't try to, try to confuse me, Speed. You want to know her, don't you? Sure, I. let's have it. Oh, well, my father and Gan were tunneling a new shaft in the side of the mountain. They were working alone that day. They'd set a dynamite charge inside the shaft with wires out to the ignition box. The box worked with a plunger, but when my father pushed it down, the dynamite didn't go off. He went back inside to find the trouble. While he was in there, Gan pushed down the plunger again. My father was blown to bits. Just like that, huh? Don't you believe me? Like I say, I'll work on it. They'll hang him, won't they? Hang who? Ganlon, they'll hang him when you find the proof. If he's guilty, they'll hang him. Oh, you'll prove it, darling. Promise me you will, so they can arrest him when he arrives. You'll, you'll do it for your baby, I know. Kiss me, darling. How's that? Oh, that's wonderful. That's all I care about. That and seeing Ganlon hanged. She went to sleep then, just as peaceful as you please, dreaming of Ganlon with a rope around his neck. <laughs> well, I found the thing they call the city hall, I asked to see the records of her old man's death. Well, they hemmed, they hawed some, and then... Well, it came out that half the town had burned down a few years back. The records went up with it. Well, they finally suggested I see an old-timer named... I think it was Konsky. He'd been her 
father's mind foreman at one time or another. Well, I did. He was already waiting for me. He seemed to know what I was after. He was all primed with the answers. Sure, I know, Sylvia. Sweetest, prettiest little kid ever see all my life. And of course you knew her father. <laughs> sure, I know. I guess Sylvia must have been pretty fond of him. <laughs> sure, she was crazy about him. Wasn't she? Maybe. But if she was, she was the only one in this town wasn't glad to see him die. Look, uh, look, you don't have to be cagey with me. I'm trying to help Sylvia. All right. You know what best thing you can do? What? Get out of town before you make plenty of trouble. Well, that was that. The next stop was the office of the weekly paper owned, published, printed, and peddled by one guy, a guy named McLean. He seemed to know all about my business, too. He had the files all laid out for me. Look, why don't you lay off it, Evans, huh? It's ten years old and dead and buried. Yeah, look, you mind if I look at your files? Yeah, here? sure, sure, go ahead. You can see what it says. Mine disaster, premature explosion, accidental death. Mm -hmm. Any chance it wasn't accidental? What do you mean? Any chance that Gallon did it? No, not a chance. You seem pretty sure. Did you ever notice that uh, gimpy leg of his? Yeah. Well, that's how he got it. He was in the mine when it happened. <laughs> I was getting no place fast, only a suspicion and not a very comfortable one. And I hadn't the faintest idea where to go from here. And then I thought of the doctor. Hey, there had to be a doc to sign the death certificate. I found out who it was, dug him up. Well, he looked like the worst bet of the bunch. He was half wacky from the effects of age and a misspent life. Nothing left but his dignity and a collection of photographs he insisted on talking about till I wanted to smack him. Yes, yes, it was my hobby before my eyes went back on me, but, well, those you see on the wall are only a few. Uh, here, here, take a look at some of these. Who are all you people covering up for, Doc? Huh? I beg your pardon? You heard me. Young man, do you realize that what you just said constitutes the most serious slur on my professional reputation? Oh, nuts. Look, I'm trying to help a girl that I'm in love with. Can't anybody understand uh, that? Here, here, take this one, for instance. Uh, notice the contrast, the light and the shadow. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't suppose you understand the meaning of the term traumatic experience, huh? No, I thought not. The psychic structure of the personality is a very delicate mechanism. Uh, for instance, in the case of... Sylvia, take her to a competent man in the field, Mr. Evans. I no longer handle such cases. Look, that's not what I came here to you for. You know that. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you. Retired some time ago, you see. I... Uh, here, now, look at some of these. Uh, they're older, of course, but there's still some very good ones among them. Look, I... Doc, I don't want to look at pictures. All I want is... A... Oh. You found one you like, eh? I knew you'd find one. There's a date on it, July 14th, 1935. That mean anything to you? Uh, is that the stalagmite encrustation? If so, it's I don't one know. Of... I, I, I don't know. It's just got some rocks in it and a hole in a mountain. But that date is the date that Sylvia's father was killed. Give it to me. Give it to me at once. No, 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 no you don't. Yeah, I'm afraid you've kind of torn it, Doc. Give it back to me, I say. But the part I got is still enough to show who killed him. I started back for the hotel, but I didn't feel so good. I didn't feel good at all. I asked at the desk if Ganlin had arrived. He hadn't, so I went on up to Sylvia's room. She was sitting at the dressing table making up her face. She looked up at me in the mirror. You know. I can tell by your eyes you know. Yes, baby, I know. Then they'll hang him, won't they? No, Ganlin? No. No, baby, he's in the clear. He isn't. He can't be. He murdered my father. I know he did. You're just lying to me. You're trying... Look, take it easy, baby. It's going to be all right. Just let's, let's get it over with, huh? And we can forget it. Get what over with? You're acting so funny, darling. Mm. Here. Take a look at this picture. Hmm? Huh? Yeah. Oh, that's me, isn't it? When I was a little girl. I'm awfully far away, but... I still know it's me. But the smoke... Don't you remember? Please, speed. My, my, my head kind of hurts. Don't... But try to remember. Speed, you're tormenting me. You're trying to hurt me. That smoke is the explosion, isn't it? I don't know. You pushed the plunger, know. remember? I don't While know. While your father was inside the shaft, I don't remember? Know. Yes. I killed him. All right, baby, that's... Uh... That's all there is to it. You can forget. I 
hated him. It's all I lived for. It's all I ever dreamed of, to see his face bloody and battered. See his body all mangled and dirty. I hated him. I hate you. I hate all men. If I could kill every man in the world. Where did you get that gun, baby? Out of your overcoat. You, uh, you'd better put it down. I tried to kill Ganlon because he knew. Now you know. Put it down. It's too late now. Speed. Goodbye, darling. Listen, listen, it's all over now. You were only a kid. I know how he treated you. The whole town covered up for you. They're still covering. Goodbye, Speed. When the door flew open, I ducked and the shots came. When I looked around, Gannon was lying in the open door with a gun still in his hand. He, he walked right into it. He must have got in one shot, though. It was enough. She was still breathing when I got to her. That, that was about all. Oh. Oh. It's all right now. Isn't it, darling? Sure. Sure, baby. Everything is going to be all right. Kiss me. How's that? Oh, that's wonderful. But I wasn't so lucky this time, was I? Not... Not too lucky. I didn't miss. No, baby. You didn't miss. Well, any time you want to buy a, an Excelsior 8, you just come in and see old Speed Evans. <laughs> no, I won't tell you about my troubles. Dames, that's my trouble. It's been dames, dames, dames as long as I can remember. Ah, it's too bad, though. We'd have probably had a couple of kids by now. Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Roma, America's favorite wine. This is Ken Niles returning to our suspense microphone with the brilliant star of tonight's play, Glenn Ford. Glenn, you did a magnificent job. Believe me, I want a recording of your performance for my own personal library of suspense records. Well, thanks, Ken. Are you a record fan, too? <laughs> Mrs. Ford and I can't resist a good hot platter. And speaking of platters, Glenn, isn't Mrs. F. likely to serve you a nice sizzling platter garnished with a thick, juicy steak some nights? Oh, soon? she better, Ken. <laughs> well, good, because I have a little gift for you that'll make any steak taste better. Oh, well, suspense me no further, Ken. What's the secret? Well, your gift, Glenn, is a basket of Roma California wines presented by Roma, America's greatest vintner. In that basket is a bottle of red, robust Roma Burgundy, the perfect taste companion for tender steaks, a brace of broiled chops, or any red meat. Better tasting Roma Burgundy brings out all the natural hidden flavors in hearty foods. Adds pleasure to every bite. Roma Burgundy, huh? Well, I'll remember that, Ken. And remember, too, that all Roma wines taste better because Roma starts with choicest grapes, guides them unhurriedly to tempting taste perfection with skill and resources unmatched in America. Then Roma places this luscious grape treasure with Roma wines of years before to await selection from the world's greatest wine reserves for your pleasure. That's why more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. Well, I can't think of a, of a better endorsement. <laughs> Thank you, and good night. Glenn Ford appeared through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures and is soon to be seen starring in the Columbia Picture Frame. Tonight's suspense play was adapted by Irving Moore and Robert Richards from a story by Irving Moore. Next Thursday, same time, you will hear Agnes Moorhead as star of Suspense. Produced and directed by William Spear for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>